A diverticulum is a sac-like herniation of the lining of the bowel that extends through a defect in the muscle layer. Diverticula may occur anywhere in the small intestine or colon but mostly occur in the sigmoid colon. Diverticulosis exists when multiple diverticula are present without inflammation or symptoms. It is most common in people older than 80 years old. A low intake of dietary fiber is considered a major predisposing factor. Diverticulitis results when food and bacteria retained in the diverticulum produced infection and inflammation that can impede draining and lead to perforation or abscess. It may occur in acute attacks or persist as a chronic, smoldering infection. A congenital predisposition is likely when the disorder is present in those younger than 40 years old. Complications of diverticulitis include abscess, fistula formation, obstruction, perforation, peritonitis, and hemorrhage. Clinical manifestations. Diverticulosis. 1. Frequently, no problematic symptoms are noted. Chronic constipation often precedes development. 2. Bowel irregularity with intervals of diarrhea, nausea and anorexia, bloating or abdominal distension. 3. Cramps, narrow stools, increased constipation or at times intestinal obstruction, weakness, fatigue, and anorexia. Diverticulitis. 1. Acute onset of mild to severe pain in the left lower quadrant. 2. Nausea, vomiting, fever, chills, and leukocytosis. 3. If untreated, peritonitis, and septicemia will develop. Assessment and diagnostic findings. Colonoscopy and possibly barium enema studies. Computed tomography scan with contrast agent. Abdominal X-ray. Laboratory test. Complete blood cell count, revealing an elevated white blood cell count, and elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ESR. Gerontologic considerations. The incidence of diverticular disease increases with age, because of degeneration and structural changes in the circular muscle layers of the colon and cellular hypertrophy. Symptoms are less pronounced among elderly patients, who may not experience abdominal pain until infection occurs. They may delay reporting symptoms because they fear surgery or cancer. Blood in stool may frequently be overlooked because of failure to examine the stool or inability to see changes because of impaired vision. Medical management. Dietary and pharmacologic management. Diverticulitis can usually be treated on an outpatient basis with diet and medication, symptoms treated with rest, analgesics, and antispasmodics. The patient is instructed to ingest clear liquids until inflammation subsides, then a high-fiber, low-fat diet. Antibiotics are prescribed for 7 to 10 days and a bulk-forming laxative is also prescribed. Patients with significant symptoms and often those who are elderly, immunocompromised, or taking corticosteroids are hospitalized. The bowel is rested by withholding oral intake, administering IV fluids, and instituting nasogastric suctioning. Broad-spectrum antibiotics and analgesics are prescribed and an opioid is prescribed for pain relief. Oral intake is increased as symptoms subside. A low-fiber diet may be necessary until signs of infection decrease. Antispasmodics such as propantholine bromide and oxyphencyclamin Daricon, may be prescribed. Normal stools can be achieved by administering bulk preparations like psyllium, stool softeners, warm oil enemas, and evacuant suppositories. Surgical management. Surgery-like resection is usually necessary only if complications if for example, perforation, peritonitis, hemorrhage, obstruction can occur. Type of surgery performed varies according to the extent of complications either one-stage resections or multi-stage procedures may be performed. In some cases fecal diversion like colostomy may be performed. The patient with diverticulitis. Assessment. Assess health history, including onset and duration of pain, dietary habits like fiber intake, and past and present elimination patterns like straining at stool, constipation with diarrhea, tenesmus, and persistent urge to defecate, abdominal bloating, and distension. 
Tenesmus is described as the spasm of the anal sphincter with pain. Auscultate for presence and character of bowel sounds, palpate for tenderness, pain, or firm mass over left lower quadrant, inspect stool for pus, mucus, or blood. Monitor blood pressure, temperature, and pulse for abnormal variations. Diagnosis. Nursing diagnoses. Constipation related to narrowing of the colon secondary to thickened muscular segments and strictures. Acute pain related to inflammation and infection. Collaborative problems, potential complications. Peritonitis. Abscess formation. Bleeding. Planning and goals. The major goals of the patient may include attainment and maintenance of normal elimination patterns, pain relief, and absence of complications. Nursing interventions. For maintaining normal elimination patterns. Increase fluid intake to 2 liters per day within limits of patient's cardiac and renal reserve. Promote foods that are soft but have increased fiber content. Encourage individualized exercise program to improve abdominal muscle tone. Review patient's routine to establish a set time for meals and defecation. Encourage daily intake of bulk laxatives like psyllium, stool softeners, or oil retention enemas. Administer stool softeners or oil retention enemas as prescribed. Urge patients to identify food triggers like nuts and popcorn that may bring on an attack of diverticulitis and avoid them. For relieving pain the nurse should administer analgesic agents usually opioid analgesics for pain and antispasmodic medications. Record and monitor intensity, duration, and location of pain. For monitoring and managing potential complications the nurse should identify patients at risk and manage their symptoms as needed. Assess for indicators of perforation, increased abdominal pain and tenderness accompanied by abdominal rigidity, elevated white blood cell count, elevated ESR, increased temperature, tachycardia, and hypotension. Evaluation and expected patient outcomes. Attains a normal pattern of elimination and pain complications. Reports decreased pain. Recovers without complications. Thank you for watching. If you want to study nursing anywhere, please subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for updates of my new video. If any concerns, just comment below.